Hi, everybody. How are you? My name is Natasha Gale. I am the owner of Natasha Wellness. Um, I actually live right across uh, the street in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'm a health and wellness coach and essential oils dealer. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, health and wellness, obviously, and essential oils and how you can use um, food and oils to balance yourself throughout the summertime. Um, so if you don't know what Ayurveda is, uh, just a quick rundown. It is a very old, ancient um, Indian modern medicine, or sorry, not modern medicine, old medicine. And it's coupled a little bit with modern science. That's the way that I approach it. And it's kind of in line with the yogic principles. So if you're into yoga, you'll probably be into Ayurveda. And a lot of it is about living seasonally and feeding yourself seasonally and kind of treating your body as an individual. Um, and that's what we do. We, we look at the, peop at the person's uh, individuality rather than looking at the disease, and that's where I treat people's ailments. So today, let's kind of get into the fun stuff. So I'm a huge foodie. I brought all of my favorite things here. You'll see quite a variety of stuff. So I'll be going through all these things, what you should and should not be eating for the summertime. So uh, basically, when we adjust our lifestyle uh, to match the season, our health, in a, it, it kind of rises in abundance, right? We all know that shopping at farmer's markets in the summertime is really good for us. Um, it's obviously very delicious. It's fresh. It's in season. It's local. Um, that's kind of the starting point into the Ayurvedic perspective. Um, so when we eat in season, we're also promoting our digestive enzymes, which is very important. So many of Americans have bloating issues and digestive issues and probably eat too much fast food and eat out at restaurants too often. And a lot of the power is taken away from us, right? So we are not really allowing ourselves to understand what is really good for our bodies. And the more we listen to ourselves and understand our own constitution and the seasons, the better we can balance everything out. So the summer microbes support balanced immunity and digestion. Our mood, our energy, and our blood sugar should be at optimal levels, um, our weight and our sleep, and much more. So summer is also associated with the qualities of pitta. So there's three doshas in Ayurveda, vata, kapha, and pitta. Summertime is pitta. It's the season of fire and water. And it's important for us to understand that because we want to balance that out within our bodies. And we can do that with food, we can do that with exercise, and we can do that with oils. So um, basically we want to focus on activities that keep us cool, keep us balanced. We don't want to exacerbate the fire within us um, or the water within us too much. So it's an interesting balance and it's actually really delicious. Um, so in the summertime you want to eat more foods that are sweet, bitter, astringent, cold, heavy, and oily. So some of the foods I brought to you today have these qualities. So some things like split mung beans or regular beans, that would be some of the products. Um, coconut is really great because it's cooling. So I have some coconut milk. You can make a curry out of this. Coconut oil, you can just cook all your vegetables in the coconut oil. Um, kale, dill, lettuce, any sort of greens, that's going to be so good for you in the summer. Salads are going to be really good for you in the summertime. It's probably what you crave anyway, so eat all of that as much as you want. Um, fresh seasonal tomatoes. Try to get the kind from the farmer's market. This is actually from the Union, Union Square Farmer's Market. Um, I got it this past weekend, and they are absolutely delicious. They're super sweet. Um, peppers, um, you can include a little bit of ginger if you are feeling on the colder or sicker side. And um, what else do we have here? Yeah, so basically just an abundance of, of freshness. Um, pomegranates, potatoes, fish is super great right now, shellfish, um, seeds, right? Root vegetables, all that sort of stuff. Lime is going to be really wonderful. Um, it's cooling. I have a lemon here. You can include lemon. I love to wake up and drink lemon water in the morning time. Uh, it's very cleansing and um, it alkalizes our bodies in the morning. If you are a fiery person and lemon just doesn't sit well with you, you can go for lime. That's also great. Um, and a good way to introduce oils into this is you, if you don't have a lemon or lime at home, you can actually just buy a little essential oil. We make lemon or lime, doTERRA makes lemon or lime, and you can add it to your water, like one or two drops, and you're set. And I personally, I like to use fresh, but when I'm traveling or when I run out of things, I always have lemon and lime in my drawers so that 
I always feel like I'm just treating my body right and making sure I'm staying on top of all of my routines. Um, some other things to eat that are really good in the summertime, cilantro, right, super cooling, you want to eat cooling foods, um, peppermint, peppermint and fennel, really cooling, wonderful foods. Fennel is especially wonderful if you have digestive problems. So um, we actually also sell both of those oils. We have oils that are herbs, which is really cool. I have basil here, um, and, uh, but we also have fennel, like I said, uh, we have um, peppermint as well and so peppermint is really cooling and you know that right so you can put that stuff in your water you can bake with it you can flavor your um, your brownies or your muffins or your pancakes or whatever you're eating with a little bit of an essential oil and you're not only getting the um, the properties of the actual oil is that you're also getting the <coughs> the immune system of the oil, which is really, really important for our bodies. So an oil is actually just a really concentrated version of what the source actually is. So if you think about like, um, like wild orange, for example, right? So there's oranges and you eat the orange and you get the health benefits, you get the vitamins, right? And the minerals. The oil is actually, it's taking the entire orange and the rind, the inside, everything, and it's taking out all of the oils, especially in the rind, because that's where the, the really oily part is, right? Like you squeeze uh, uh, orange and you can smell it and it's amazing. Um, so that's really, really beneficial to increase your health. Um, some things to avoid, right? So I have this section right here, which is kind of exciting when you look at it, but I'm sad to tell you that you shouldn't be having too much of this stuff right here. Uh, we have alcohol. Sorry guys, alcohol is not the best thing to have in the summertime. I know you like to drink in the summer, we all do. Try to minimize these things, right? I'm not telling you to have a terrible life and cut out all of your favorite things, but minimizing these will make you feel so much better. Um, kombucha, chocolate, um, sour things, right, kombucha, and uh, spicy things are not going to be very good because they're heat producing. Coffee as well, very acidic. Um, some other things that you can do in the summertime to keep your cool is to do a self-massage with coconut oil. You can add essential oils into it. Frankincense yeah. is a really wonderful cooling oil as well. Um, you can add lavender into it to kind of calm yourself down, and it's just a really nice practice. So if We're you're feeling any sort of irritability or impatience or uh, upset stomach, like uh, sort of acidic stomach, ulcers, um, skin rashes, lethargy and acne, low blood sugar, difficulty falling asleep, any of those things, I can help you balance yourself out. Um, you can also start to implement these practices that I kind of told you about today, eating more of these foods, eating less of these foods. But if you'd like to learn more, you can go to my website, natashawellness.com. I offer free consultations. We talk for a half hour about anything that you want, and I help you, um, I help you with anything you need. So again, Natasha, natashawellness.com. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm Allie, that's short for Alistair, and I am from Storytime with Drag Kings and Queens and Friends. We are a roving pop-up Storytime session. We do events all around Boston where we give kiddos and their grown-ups the royal treatment. We read fun, awesome, award-winning, diverse books. We sing silly songs, we play games, and every once in a while when someone we make crafts also. You can follow us on Facebook at Drag Storytime to see where we're going next. And today, I'm very excited because we're going to do some really fun things. We're going to sing our theme song, which I'll teach to all the friends at home. Then I'll tell you about some of our favorite books, and then we'll settle in and read a really nice, perfect for Pride weekend story. All right, so our Storytime theme song that we kick off every Drag Storytime with is really easy to pick up on, and the most important part are the hand motions. So you can practice and sing along with me. It's really, really easy. It goes like this. We're gonna read some books, yay! We're gonna see some looks, hey! We'll laugh and sing and play and have an amazing day, woo! That's it, easy peasy. We start every story time like that. Let's try it one more time. We're gonna read some books, yay! We're gonna see some looks, hey! We'll laugh and sing and play and have an amazing day, woo! 
Now, for those of you who are looking for some new books to read with your kiddos and friends, here are some of our favorites. We love the Little Libro series. This is great for story times with toddlers. It's awesome because there's a little blurb. And then you can learn all sorts of amazing vocab words and learn about iconic pop culture figures like our beautiful queen, Celia Cruz. We also love the story, Worm Loves Worm. This is by Mike, uh, illustrated by Mike Curato, written by JJ Austrian. It's a beautiful story about two worms who just want to get married already. We wrap up every single one of our story times with a book by Todd Parr. He's an amazing author illustrator who writes beautiful, beautiful children's books, encouraging kids and their grown-ups and families to be themselves and love themselves. Um, this is one of my favorites. It's called It's Okay to Be Different. If you're reading a if you're looking for a great pride story time, the family book is also awesome. We won't go through the whole stack, but finally, this is one we've been reading a lot. It's an awesome, awesome book by author-illustrator Jessica Love, and it's called Julian is a Mermaid. And grown-ups, I'm warning you, you're gonna cry. Happy cry, a good cathartic nice cry, but you will cry when you read this story. It is that beautiful. And let me just show you really quickly some of the art. I mean, look at that. Can you handle it? I can't. All right, now that we've done some book reviewing, why don't we settle in and read a story? That's why you're watching, right? And to help raise money for this amazing, wonderful community television station. So today, we are going to read a very special story about a very special bunny. This book is called A Day in the Life of Marlon Bundo. And it's written by Marlon Bundo with a little bit of help from Jill Twiss. Whoops. Hello, my name is Marlon Bundo, and I am a bunny. I live with mom, grandma, and grandpa in an old stuffy house on the grounds of the US Naval Observatory. That's because my grandpa is the vice president. His name is Mike Pence. But this story isn't going to be about him because he isn't very fun. This story is about me because I am very, very fun. This is the story of my very special day. My very special day started out like any other day. I woke up all alone. Then I ate a fine bunny breakfast all alone. While I watched the news all alone. You see, sometimes old stuffy houses are also lonely. After breakfast, I hopped to the garden to look at the flowers and say, hello down there to the bugs. Hello, Phil. Hello, Dennis. That's the bugs, Phil and Dennis. That is when I saw him. He was a big floppy bunny with the floppiest floppy ears and the bushiest bushy tail. He was bunny beautiful. I was standing still, but being near him made me feel like my heart was still hopping. There he is, this very special, handsome bunny. My name is Marlin, I said, but my family calls me Bodis. It's short for Bunny of the United States. That's a long story. My name is Wesley, and my family calls me Wesley, said Wesley. Wesley and I hopped together all over around, around the garden. We hopped over daisies. We hopped over tiny carrots that weren't ready to grow up and be lunches yet. We hopped over Phil and Dennis. Hop, hop, hop. Ooh, poor Phil and Dennis, their checkers game is ruined. Do you think they minded? I don't think so. Once we had hopped through every part of the garden, we didn't want to stop hopping. So we hopped right inside the old stuffy house. We hopped up and down the creaky stairs and made beautiful creaky stair music together. We hopped through the kitchen and maybe left a few bunny prints. We hopped through very boring meetings with very boring people. Hop, hop, hop. It was a very good hop. It was the best hop. And I realized something. When I hopped with Wesley, 
My old stuffy house didn't feel lonely anymore. At the end of our hop, I said, Wesley, I don't want to ever hop without you again. And Wesley said, that's funny, because I never want to hop without you, Marlon Bundo. And we both said, we will get married and hop together forever. That's so nice. <gasps> Look, they're going to tell their friends. Hello, everyone, we said to all the animals in the garden. Hello, Phil and Dennis the Bugs, and Pumpernickel, who is a badger, and Scooter, who is a turtle, and Dill Prickle, who is a hedgehog, and Mr. Paws, who is a very good dog. Hello, all of you. We are getting married, so we can hop together forever. Hooray, said Phil and Dennis the Bugs, and Pumpernickel, who is a badger, and Scooter, who is a turtle, and Dill Prickle, who is a hedgehog, and Mr. Paws, who is a very good dog. Hooray, said all of our friends, because that is what friends say. Can you all say hooray at home, too? <gasps> Wait, said a scary voice. You can't get married. <gasps> we looked around and saw that the scary voice was coming from dun, 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 the stink bug. Let me tell you a little bit about the stink bug. The stink bug was in charge. He was important. None of the other animals could quite work out why he was in charge or how he was important, but he was. And that meant he made the rules. And that meant that all the animals listened to him, even though he was, and this is true, very stinky. What are they going to do about that mean old stink bug? <gasps> boy bunnies don't marry boy bunnies, said the stink bug. Boy bunnies have to marry girl bunnies. But this is the bunny I love, said Wesley. And the, this is the bunny I love, said me, Marlon Bundo. Just being next to Wesley made me a little bit braver. Too bad, said the stink bug. I am the stinkiest, and I am important, and I am in charge. Boy bunnies marry girl bunnies. Girl bunnies marry boy bunnies. This is the way it has always been. You are different, and different is bad. <gasps> Do you think different is bad? I don't think so. Let's see what the friends have to say. The other animals whispered nervously amongst themselves. Psst, 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 psst. Pumpernickel, who is a badger, came forward. I am different too, he said. I eat my sandwiches crust first. I am different too, said Dill Prickle, who is a hedgehog. I read the ends of books before I read the beginning, just to make sure they're not too scary for me. I'm different too, said Mr. Paws, who is a very good dog. Sometimes I sniff butts, and I don't know why. Everyone is different, and different is not bad, said Scooter, who is a turtle. Different is special. I would definitely listen to a fabulous turtle like Scooter over a stink bug. Wait, said Mr. Paws, who is a very good dog and also a very smart dog. Wait a minute. We get to decide who is in charge. We get to decide who is important. We can vote. And on this very special day, all the animals voted on who they wanted to have in charge. So they voted either the stink bug or not the stink bug. They chose... <gasps> Not the stink bug! Hooray, said Marlon Bundo. Hooray, said Wesley. Hooray, said all of our friends. Because that is what friends say. No, boom, the stink bug. Boy bunnies cannot marry boy. You are not in charge, yelled all the friends. So Wesley and I got married. We had two handsome groom's otters named Muffins and Cubby and a flower mouse named Hiccup. We ate and drank and danced the hokey pokey. Dill Prickle was especially good. It's a hedgehog pun. And the ceremony was performed by a cat named Pajama who brought her wife as a date. After we ate and drank and danced, we went home together. We have to get some sleep, Marlin. Tomorrow we leave on our bunny moon. Because it doesn't matter if you love a boy bunny or a girl bunny, or you eat your sandwich backwards or forward. 
Stink bugs are temporary. Love is forever. The end. If you're at home, can you say that with me? Love is forever. Thank you so much for having me. Again, my name is Allie, short for Alistair, and I'm from Storytime with drag kings and queens and friends. You can find us every first Saturday of the month at the Boston Public Library Copley in the children's section. And our next big Storytime event will be at Aeronauts Alston Space, where we will, for the first time ever, bum, 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 be doing an event that has special resources for teens and tweens. So if you have kids, little, big, medium, small, large, who wanna come out for an evening and see some drag performers and talk to us and just have a lot of fun, and if you're an adult, responsibly and enjoy <laughs> a grown-up drink and some delicious food, we'll see you at Alston's Aeronauts, Aeronauts Alston Space. Um, and we'll be there on June 20th, which is a Wednesday. And you can find us around 5 p.m. And it's a beautiful event with an evening full of performances and good stuff. So we hope to see you around uh, the internet and around town where we will be having lots and lots of sparkly fun. And thank you so much to Somerville Community Access Television for having me here today. Happy Pride, everybody. And remember, stink bugs are temporary. Love is forever. Thank you, friends. Thank <laughs> you.